Okay, we got a brand new tutorial for you guys. Finally, I know it's been a little while, but we're going to do something quick. We're going to teleport ourselves over to that truck by throwing this thing here. This is the new throwable, carryable uh, device that they put in 3610, which is brand new. We're gonna hit J to pick it up. And as you can see, it sort of fits in my hands quite nicely. And if I chuck it, got some effects that go on. We got a sound that goes on. And if we head on over into it, it sends us to the truck and the portal is gone. So we're going to talk about how to teleport people, how to create a portal, how to create some effects when the carryable object gets chucked, and of course, how to use the carryable and of course, throwable object. It's pretty cool. The other thing to note is that it is going to end in 15 seconds. So if I were to just wait just a few seconds longer, it goes away on its own. So we're going to talk about how to do that as well. Okay, we're inside a UEFN and we're going to bring in our throwable, carryable object by going into Fortnite and then devices. And then in here, you just put carry and it will bring this carryable item spawner onto the scene. Place this here. We can do a fresh one. I can show you what it does from the get go. Supposedly, this is a boulder that is inside of here and there's a boulder effect that happens, uh, but we're not going to use that. We want to use we want to use this bottle that I got and this bottle when thrown is going to create a portal. So about the bottle inside of my content browser here, we have our geometry and I have uh, a bottle that I got from Cargo, which is Kitbash and Initially, it's really small, um, but I made it bigger, made a duplicate and made it bigger. Now, the thing to think about when it comes to putting your own custom mesh in, you have to consider where the pivot point is of that object so that it fits in your hands properly when you lift it up. If the pivot point is incorrect, you can just change that in the modeling tools. So if we go over to this one here, we can see that the pivot point was a little bit higher than in here, right? So I change that. We do that in the modeling tools which is up here, modeling, go to X form, and then we can change the pivot point with the edit pivot. And when you're done, you're gonna bake that transform in. I also made it a little bit bigger by just scaling it up and baking that in as well. And then what you do is you go over to your device and I'll just go to the one that hasn't been set. In the details panel, you scroll down a little ways, you can see we can put in a custom mesh. And for this one, we're going to put in potion bottle. Like that. When you select that, it will put the bottle or whatever you want to throw uh, or pick up inside of here like this so that it indicates what it is. Now, the next thing that we have to do is set up what we want the effect to be when it explodes and the sound. Now, I've got all of those uh, inside of my audio. I have a portal appearance and a portal energy. And we'll discuss how to bring that portal energy, both effect and sound in in a second. But when we throw the item and it lands, it's going to make a sound and we can change that in the custom explode SFX. Now, as a just a sound wave, we can't put it in. So we have to make a sound cue. You can right click and then hit create cue. And when you double click on this, it will create what is essentially called a cue, which gives you the output of a wave file being played. You can put some stuff in here. We're not going to do anything like that. Gonna close that down. So now we have our cue and we can put it in our custom explode SFX by hitting the little arrow like that. And then we want the custom explode VFX to be different because right now it's what essentially what would happen if a rock exploded. So we don't want a rock exploding. We want magical portal effects to explode. So for that, inside of my Niagara effects, I have a pile of stuff. I have mega magic VFX bundle that I purchased a while back, light burst systems, and I have this light blast effect. So what happens is it just does this blast. It's crazy. It's, it's brilliant and bright. And I didn't make it, but I've modified it to suit my needs. The one thing that you're going to need your VFX to do, if you click on the actual VFX itself, it's going to need to loop only once. You don't want it looping over and over because the throw and land effect, the explosion effect that comes with this carryable object device will continue to play that VFX over and over again if it loops. Now, if you want that, then do that, but likely not. And then each one of your settings here also has to be set to only be once for a loop behavior. Otherwise, obviously it'll loop. So this will just go one time when it lands. And if we select that, go back to our device here, 
And then in the custom explode VFX, we can just put that in there. So that's how I set up the carryable object. The only other thing that I did was not have it spawn automatically. So I turned off the respawn automatically right here so that when the player uses it, it doesn't get respawned until I tell it to. So we're going to cover all the verse in just a second. But one more quick explanation to be had here for the items in our scene that we've set up. We've got teleporters because we have to teleport the player around. And then we've got a VFX spawner here, which has our NS portal vortex one, which is our portal that we are going to go into to teleport away, which I have in my advanced portal systems VFX. And then inside of here is VFX and then Vortex. And I'm using just this first one, which looks like this, which is pretty cool if you ask me. I think that's a pretty neat little Vortex you'd go into and then get sucked away into a, a tele. So when we, when we have this ready, we can just have our VFX spawner uh, ready here. We hit Customize, Visual Effect Override, click that. And then we'd put that in with the little arrow there, or you could just drag it in if you want to. The VFX spawner is inside Fortnite and then devices, and you can just look for VFX, and that's gonna be a VFX spawner that you drag into the scene. The last thing that we need to do is bring in an audio player, and the audio player has our portal energy on it. But remember, back in my audio files, I had a, had a portal energy file. Well, that can just go straight in here. You don't have to make it a queue if you don't want to. I'll just go straight in here. I increase the volume a little bit so it'd be a little bit louder. Kind of cool. Um, make it attenuate so it's going to make the sound where the audio player is. Now the trick that we have to pay attention to here is that the VFX spawner is a parent to both the audio player and the teleporter because we're going to move the VFX spawner to where the carryable object lands after we throw it. So the trick is we want both the sound and the teleportation device, which is going to be invisible to the player, uh, to land at the same spot when we hit off our VFX spawner to show our visual portal. So that pretty much concludes everything that goes on inside of here. There's a bunch of other stuff in here because I've been doing testing on all kinds of things. Coming up soon actually is going to be a tutorial on the uh, device that fills things up over time, but it's for another time. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is put a teleporter where we want somebody to teleport to. I put it over here near the truck that I can then drive off in. But of course, your game is going to be whatever it's going to be. But this is a kind of a cool way to show a teleport portal that a player would think to go into and then take themselves somewhere else. And they can instigate it by throwing the carryable object. We've covered all that inside of the scene. Let's check out the verse. OK, if you're new to verse, don't sweat it. We're going to cover this in an understandable way. So don't worry if you're not new to verse. This is going to probably be pretty easy. But uh, just to cover it, we want to open our verse Explorer. And then inside of here, we can right click and add a new verse file to the project. And we're going to call this one Portal Game Manager. And we'll hit Create I have to save everything. And that's going to make a file inside of our verse Explorer here. But we can hit this verse button up top here. This will give us our verse window. OK, so inside of verse, we can see we have our portal game manager right here. We'll double click on it. It's green because it hasn't been checked in. We're going to delete some code right off the bat because we don't need it. It's just a bunch of uh, boilerplate stuff that isn't useful at all. Now, you could put a block in here to get rid of the red squigglies. And at the very least, we can now build which I do with a control shift B or if we go into UEFN, we can go verse and then build verse code and that will build it as well. Once you build, you can then go into your content browser and inside of here, we're going to look for portal game manager, bring that into the scene. And then we're going to quickly put visible in game to false or unchecked and enable the game start should stay the same. Now there's nothing in here to do yet, but we're going to code that now. OK, so I'm just going to copy and paste some bits of code in here because we need to be able to tell the device how to talk to everything that's in the game. And the way we do that is we make editables and editable is just a way if I go ahead and save this and again, build control shift B it's going to ask me to save. And then if we look inside of our game again, we can click our device. You can see all of a sudden there's all this stuff down here inside of the portal game manager. So we can hook up our VFX, which I know to be the third one. We can hook up our carry device, which will be the first one, because the second one is that we just made. We can hook up our audio player and our teleporter. The one that's connected to the VFX spawner is going to be our from teleporter, although it doesn't really matter, but you can't see either of them. So a player wouldn't know to go to the other one. And then teleporter two is the other one, which, which is next to the truck. OK, so that's why we do this. That's how we can hook up the device to the game and have them talk to each other 
and make things happen. So to cover this, we have a VFX. I've just called it VFX. This is the name of it. Carry device, portal audio. And this is the type that it is. So if we wanted to type this out, I'll just do a V for now. The VFX spawner, if I just start with VFX, it'll show up in here. And that is the device that we're going to use to make the VFX happen for the portal. We've got a carryable spawner device, which also shows up when you start to type an audio player to play the audio and two teleporter devices to do some teleporting. When we're going to detect that the player has teleported, we're then gonna turn off the portal, turn off the other teleporter. We're gonna turn off both teleporters and we're also gonna stop the audio. So we need to be able to detect when that happens. All right, okay, so then in on begin, which is when this device gets instantiated in the game, we're gonna get rid of the block for now, we don't need that. And we're going to just copy paste in a couple of things that we need to listen for in the game. Now the carry device has an exploded event. If you're wondering how I know there's an explode event, you can control click a carryable spawner device item here, and it will bring you to the fortnite.digest.verse file, which gives you everything that you can do for this device. There's a lot of stuff. But we want to listen to the exploded event because this thing explodes when it lands and we want to know where it lands. So we can do that with the explode event. So we're going to call a function on explode. Which we'll type in a second. The teleporter two, which is the one that the player teleports to, we're going to listen to the teleported event. And we can do the same thing here. We can control click teleporter device. And in here is all the stuff that we can access with burst. So we're going to get the teleported event we're going to call on teleport. Okay, so let's copy paste in the next bit of code. Um, we need to do a couple of things here. The first thing is that we need to grab the transform. What's a transform? The transform is a position and rotation. And we can do that from the carryable object transform, which is inside the fortnite.digest.verse file. And we can see that right here. So we can grab that, but it's an optional. So we have to set a variable to catch this. And then we have to do um, a comparison to make sure that it actually exists. And if whenever you're using optionals like this, this is how you're gonna handle it. You're going to first set up that it's a question mark transform. Now we also have to, to get rid of these squigglies. We're just gonna bring in the library of code, uh, Unreal Engine Temporary Spatial Math. Copy, paste that in. And that will get rid of that squiggly there because the transform is something that has a bunch of extra stuff on it. We need another library for. So the optional means that we then have to question whether or not it exists. So we can just put another variable um, that is going to be set to this item. If it exists, if it's not, then it's false, but it should exist. We're going to grab the translation, which is the X, Y, Z, and we're gonna grab the rotation, which it's just rotation, obviously. And I've just set them to T and R, and then we're going to teleport. Now this may seem a lot if you're brand new to Verse. It's actually reasonably simple. If you wanna know the location of an item, you're gonna get the transform of it. And then inside of the transform is translation and rotation. That's just a rule, you just remember that. So the actual position is the transform dot translation dot rotation. And once we get that, we can then do a teleport to call. So the VFX object, which is the spawner device, it's derived from a creative device base. And a creative object then can have teleport to called on it. Here, you can see this here. Don't worry about reading all this stuff. Just know that it's possible to, to tell a device where to go and by using teleport to, we can do that. So this is what we're doing. We're grabbing the event on explode when we throw the object, it lands and explodes, and that then sets off this function. We say, hey, where did that land? And this is its landing position, maybe, if it can get it or not. And if it can get it, which we determine in this line, we then grab its XYZ and its rotation, and then we wanna tell the VFX where to go. Now, the thing about the VFX is that its pivot point or the spot where the carryable lands is slightly high. So I actually minus a little bit off of the Z index here because we're still using old spatial math at the rotation to whatever it is. It doesn't, it, this doesn't matter. Like this rotation here doesn't matter for more portal VFX. It's fine. It'll work just fine. So we teleport to the location and a rotation. This is wrapped in an if statement because it can fail supposedly. And then we're going to spawn show portal. We haven't written show portal yet. Well, we also have to do on teleport. So let's do on teleport next. So here is our on teleport. When the player teleports, so they run into the portal, we're going to disable the VFX 
we're going to disable the teleporters and we're going to stop the audio. This is very simple. That's why we did this one first. This is a no brainer of how we do this. But what we really want to do is show the portal. Right? And we're spawning it. So let's talk about why we're spawning. Okay, so here is the show portal function. And this is the end of it. This is all of the verse that we need to make this happen. We want to call this function called show portal and it suspends, which means it can delay before doing another thing. So it stops the thread of action or it can stop. It doesn't have to, but it can stop the thread from continuing further. And we do that with what's called a sleep. And this is a sleep of 0.5 seconds. So if you put 0 0.5 in it, it's going to delay for because what we want to happen is when the carrier ball gets chucked and it lands, we want that explosion to go off. We give that a half a second and then we enable our VFX. Remember, when we send our VFX to that spot, that's where it's going to be. And then when we set that off to enable, that's where it's going to go off. So that's really cool. We can enable both teleporters so that they're usable for the player. And then we're going to play the audio for the portal, which is just that really cool sound. And then we're going to sleep for 15 seconds because the portal is only going to be available for 15 seconds. Then we disable the VFX, disable the teleporters, and the carry device can then have itself respawn. So it's like a usable object and you don't have to call spawn. But essentially what I'm doing is after the 15 seconds is up, the portal goes away then the thing that made the portal gets respawned. You can pick it back up and chuck it again. And then you can make another portal and tell this is everything that I think you can use as well to make a neat little portal teleporter sort of effect with the carry ball object. And there's tons more things that you can do with it. So once you've written all of this out, you could then hit save, which is a control S and then control shift B. Or of course, head over to UEFM where you can go verse and then build code as well. That'll do it. Once you've done that, this device in your scene will be working to tell everything what to do and when to do it. And that's pretty cool. And that's how you can use the carryable object to throw something, figure out where it lands, make something happen there and uh, make some pretty fun game. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed this one. If you have any questions, ask me anytime. And of course, the verse code is available over on Patreon, but hopefully you guys just type it out because uh, it's really not that hard and it's great for learning. So yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.